two characters, one room, one movie. Any tips or lessons you can share? So yeah, um, approaching a two-person, uh, one-room film should should essentially be the same approach you take in any other film. I I personally approach I personally take is to uh, treat all of my films like action films because I, I you know my my personal opinion is that action films and westerns are essentially the last true genres in my eyes. I mean, those are the two genres that know exactly what they're there to do and and they attempt to deliver it every time. You know, some of the the best action films that you can think of always deliver and they, and they do that because not necessarily because <clears throat> they're, you know, people are, you know, people do like action more, but they deliver because they don't try to all the time, they don't try to uh, stretch what they're there to do. They know that ultimately they're there to entertain you. And um, in the best action films, the one to stand the test of time, the Die Hards, the Matrix, um, films like that, those films, you know, they layer on a little something different. They layer on some uh, a level of sophistication or approach. And, and that's what makes them interesting. So that's the way I kind of approach my films the same way. Or I try to treat all my films as action films. So how does that relate to a two-person, one-room film? I mean, you still need the same elements, right? You still need, uh, you, you know, your inciting incident, your act breaks, your midpoint, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You still need all of those things, but my sort of big developments and sort of action scenes, so to speak, are an increase in pace or silence are my weapons, right? So words are my weapons and, and the way that I pace them and place them in the film is kind of how I would dictate my action scenes. And that's kind of, a, a larger picture point of view, but like a more inside point of view is that it's essentially the same thing. If you don't have the right story, you know, everybody says story, story, story. If you don't have the right story, you're in trouble. If you don't have the right, if you don't understand the story and understand the dramatic uh, breaks in the story, you're in trouble. If you don't have the right story beats, you're in trouble. So it's, it's the approach is no different, right? When you're outlining your whole, you know, well, everybody doesn't outline, but um, when I'm outlining the film, the approach is the same as if I had 20 characters. I mean, you have to get from point A to point B, and there's a there's a tried and true sort of structure that helps you get there and get and get there uh, efficiently. So that's you know I try to approach it the same way that I approach any other film uh, that I do. Um, you know, you know some of the ways that I try to go about that is understanding. Um, what it is I'm trying to do, you know, when you when you're writing, when you're writing, especially when you're when you learn screenwriting from when you get taught screenwriting, uh, one of the big things they tell you is to uh, get in a scene and get out of a scene, right? And that's very good advice. You know, the, the audience already knows where you're going before you get there anyway. So there's no point in in hanging out. Get in there and and, and get out of there. You know what I mean? Especially if you don't have anything extremely interesting to say. Um, just keep moving. And, and, and essentially what they're telling you is you, you, when you're writing a two man piece, you have to understand sort of the philosophy of what the of, of, of screenwriting, which is essentially when they tell you to to get in and out of a scene because the audience knows where you're going before you get there. Essentially, what they're telling you is, is to uh, move and be interesting, move and be interesting, move and be interesting. And that sort of mantra should be running in your head when you're writing anyway. Um, but when you, you know, you can't, when, when you're writing a two man film, sort of the setup, the the midpoint and the delivery are, all have to be based on the conversation and how you, how you keep that interesting, how you move from one scene to the next. Um, a lot of times you can use a, a direction in your writing to get from one scene to the next. You can have characters move or have them do something or pick up something that that implies that we're moving on to the next scene. And that gives the audience a visual cue and a visual understanding that the plot and the movie is still moving forward. You know, you still have to de deploy sort of the same tactics that you would any other time, which is when you're writing a two man piece, I utilize, even though characters are talking way more than probably you've ever written before. I still, I utilize other techniques to keep it interesting and to keep it moving. I utilize pacing. You know, sometimes characters will speak a lot and then sometimes they'll say one word, sometimes they won't speak. 
sometimes one character will do all the talking, the other won't. The other won't say anything. Sometimes they'll be they'll talk over each other, and that's using that pacing and dialogue um, uh, helps keep keep things interesting. So again, it goes all the way back to what I originally spoke about, which was treating every film like an action film. And you know, and when you're thinking about a two two person film, you know, for me the 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 shootouts and the and the explosions are words and pacing. Sometimes there's a rapid fire exchange between two people. Sometimes one character is just sort of mowing down the enemy. Like a, if you think of like a Terminator 2, when Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of knocks the window out and he just mows down all these cops. And you know, it's a big action set piece, but sometimes I'll have a character do that with words and speak and speak rapidly and quickly and speak over someone and not let them speak. And then sometimes Boom, I'll drop a big bomb. And, you know, you, and the character will be emphatic about something. And then you let the scene breathe and you let the characters understand the importance of what just happened. And, you know, that's sort of, that goes back to, again, back to really sort of basic elements. How the characters feel tells the audience how to feel. If the characters care, then, you know, you have a greater chance of the audience caring. If the characters don't care about what's going on, then, you know, there's a greater chance that you'll fail the movie you know, the story will fail because there's no, the stakes, the stakes aren't there, you know? So even though it sounds daunting, it's still the same approach. You just kind of go about it. Um, the, the execution changes and, you know, I, I think it'll help you as a writer if you, if you try to do it, you know, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't, you know, other people might not have any interest in doing it, but I think it would help you as a writer if you try to do it. Um, and, you know, it comes with, it really comes with one big inherent pitfall, which is, you know, and it's baked into it, which is two people talking is inherently boring, right? And the longer you look at it, the more boring it becomes. So, you know, you, you, you always hear uh, show, don't tell, show, don't tell, show, don't tell. Well, you, you know, all, everything is... Everything needs to be kept in context, right? Um, if you if you can show it and not tell it, you should probably do it. But there are times when it's interesting to hear a character talk his or her way through something, or um, hear two people go back and forth to come up with an idea. When you think of like um, uh, Ocean's Eleven, right? There's scenes where Brad Pitt and George Clooney kind of go back, they kind of go back and forth and it's, and it's fun and it's, and it's kind of, you know, light, but they come up with one idea. So they go back and, and they go back and forth and talk about something unrelated or one person talks and then Brad Pitt won't say a word and George Clooney will come up with, come up with the idea on his own and it'll, he'll think he had a conversation with Brad Pitt and he didn't. Like, sometimes that can be fun. Sometimes it can be interesting. So, you know, no rule is set in stone. Um, Writing for two people can be fun. It can also be daunting. I, I, um, I sort of change my dialogue approach, and I kind of I try to tailor it to films. You know, some I, I kind of walk into a film knowing that people talk a lot in this movie, or you know, this is a more uh, traditional sort of tried and true, straightforward kind of film where you know you show don't tell. So. Um, you know, I think it's fun. <laughs> I think it's fun. I like it. Um, and uh, I can also see why it would not be of interest to uh, someone else, any other writer. But, um, you know, it's 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 a fun exercise. If you if you if you have the time, uh, I would suggest you try it uh, simply because it'll help you uh, learn to not cheat and also learn to use your words. More importantly, even though characters talk a lot in the film, still every single word has to have a point and move the film incrementally forward. Every single word, not not every single sentence, every single word has to move the film incrementally forward. And that is uh, something that you you know you can't you can't cheat when it comes to a two man film. You can't just blow up something. Uh, when you when you when you when you feel like oh it's it's been ten minutes I, I can't keep people's attention for ten minutes I'm, I'll, I'll just blow something up well 
And now you and now you have to. <laughs> now you have to keep people's attention for ten minutes. So you know, I think it would help you become a, help someone become a better writer. Um, I I I've learned I've written more than one two two uh, two man films, and I enjoy it. I I like it. I, it 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 um it it pushes me and it frees me up at the same time. So it's it's a weird way of looking at it, but. Uh, uh, it's still, it's still fun.